boomerang grab is a great way to practice addition. We start with our silly little circle going round and round, representing our boomerang. We're chanting with our students, so we go 33, 44, 55, and you can see that we have a choice between plus 11 and plus 1. Can we get to 100? That's the objective here, and we've been successful. Is it possible to get to 100 with plus 11 and plus 2? So that's another problem. What about plus 11 and plus 3? So we're actually going to get your class to solve collectively for all of these different boomerang throws. Which ones are possible and which ones are impossible? So that's your first uh, worksheet, if you like, and that's a whole class activity. Let's look at some solutions. For the plus 11 plus 6 boomerang thrower, we have either to throw the boomerang plus 11 twice and plus 6 13 times, or we could throw the plus 11 8 times and the plus 6 2 times. Uh, once we get above the plus 6, you're going to find that there's only one solution, um, if that. So for plus 11 plus 12, then there's this solution only. For higher numbers, let's say plus 11 plus 13 and up, um, we fail for the first time at plus 11 plus 16. So there's no solutions to that one at all. No way to get to 100, no matter how you throw the boomerangs and it fails again at 18 and 19. Next it's time to have a mini competition. We're going to have boys on the left and girls on the right and the object is to get to 100 as fast as possible. So the boys might choose plus 11, the girls might choose plus 7. You can either make these choices simultaneous or you can make them one and then the other. You're going to be doing this in front of the whole class and so you might want to choose different boys and different girls each time to make the decision. If you go over a hundred, that team loses. So you can try that for a couple of different options and then it's time to break up and go to the desks and for small groups or just two students to compete against one another. So that's what these worksheets are for. You can also deal with four kids at the table with something like this. And whenever they've had a lot of practice, you can give them this one. Now this one's special because not all of the boomerang throwers can successfully get to 100. You don't tell the kids that ahead of time. I love giving impossible problems and just keeping a straight face. But let's see if any of them figure it out. Now we're going to give our boomerang thrower even more options. Here he's got four different throws that he can choose from. We're going to ask for volunteers and we're going to get the children to come up one at a time and give a number. The first child I want you to say the number has to be between 20 and 30. Second between 30 and 40. 40 and 50 and ah, some number under 100. Now all of the children have to try to solve uh, these numbers, um, at least one of them. So by posing it like that, your lower kids are going to be successful because they're going to be able to solve at least one of the stars. And your upper kids are going to be engaged because they can go beyond the call of duty without even being asked and, and solve all of them. You might want to go from there down to a table and a competition between two children. One child might name a number, 61, you try to solve 61. The other child says, oh yeah, well you try to solve 99. And so you can have this kind of competition. Whenever we've been talking here, we've been looking predominantly at numbers, but there's also really rich patterns that happen whenever you're dealing with, um, with these boomerang throw problems. Uh, let me ask you for this page, what is the largest number that's not solved uh, by this set of boomerang throws? And 
I'll also tell you that it's under 60. These, uh, this is the thought process you might go through to solve this problem. And you can see that you get big chunks of order and pattern that occur. Here's one pattern, and here's another little triangle, triangular pattern, and here's uh, another pattern. Send the students home with a piece of paper with just the arrows and ask them to choose for each arrow a number between 1 and 20 and then to come up with a puzzle to give you. Now you're going to get some puzzles that are painful to, to try to solve and you're just going to say I'm not wasting my time trying to solve that. But others are going to be really cool and you might actually want to bring some back to the whole class and that's an enormous reward for the student who, whose problem goes to the whole class. So I love doing that. The mathematician who first worked with these problems was Georg Frobenius. The problem that remains unsolved to this day is if there is an efficient way to find the largest possible number that is not solved by a specific set of boomerang throws. Thank you.